glad to see you. Same here. Uh, Same here. It's always I'm, good to see I'm, you. Folks. I'm Ronald once again on Be Peace Africa podcast. All right. All right. Um, our viewers and listeners internationally, we are having Chris Lake, Executive Director of Community for a Cause, is here to share with us on the modern parenting styles, all models, because he's the guardian, he's speaking, he's buttressing businessmen, buttressing faith-based communities, parents, people of all calibers, the young generation, those in institutions of higher learning, in all communities, the suffering, people with special abilities, with his community for a cause. And we are delighted to have him this morning as most of the learners in Uganda are preparing to go back to schools. They have been mm. burdens to their parents. Parents have been cursing, are regretting, you know, the economy is down, feeding them with a challenge. Right. And the, most of them have lost hope due to high unemployment levels in the country and internationally. So they need someone who is functional in guiding them in extending a second touch onto their lives. And ladies and gentlemen, we have nobody else other than Chris Lake from New York, from Community well, for a Cause. You're most it welcome. It is an honor course. to be here. It is an honor to be here, Ronald. Thank you so much for that glowing introduction as well. Thank you very much to everyone listening. Thank you for taking the time and the energy to be here with Be Peace Africa, hosted by Rana Piyamba. Excellent programming, excellent time. Always an honor to be here. Um, let's jump into it. We have half an hour, so let's make sure we, we fill with all the content we can. You know, you spoke about different parenting styles, and I can speak yeah. to that first. You also spoke about uh, people losing hope, and we'll talk about that next. Yeah. So in terms of parenting styles, for those who are listening and, and asking themselves, how can I be a good mom? How can I be a good dad? We're all in the same shoes in that aspect because there's no, although there's no manual that's given to us uh, when our child is born, there are books out there and there is information available, especially now that we have the internet. The world's a lot different um, than our parents had it and our parents' parent had it because we can get virtually any information that we're curious about within mm. seconds if not minutes, um, with, with access to the internet. Now, yeah. that being said, there's, there's three parenting styles that have been uh, found across experts. And there's authoritarian, mm -hmm. there is permissive, and there's authoritative. Okay, those are the three typical styles of parenting mm -hmm. that one will come across. Now, authoritarian is yeah. common in, in older generations. It's the my way is the highway. It's, it's mm. I am the adult, I am the leader, I am the ruler, you are the child. You mm. do not speak unless spoken to, you are to be seen and not heard. Um, and that's the kind of parenting where you're seeking simply obedience from a child, which um, as we've evolved across mm. generations, we found that's no longer what, what is necessary. There was a time and place when that was necessary. Um, but now we've learned that the more we honor the emotional experience that children have, the more we honor our mm. children's curiosity, the more that we have compassion for their level of understanding, um, mm. their ability to control themselves, the fact that their brain has not fully developed and will not fully develop yeah. until they're 25 years old, um, mm. the more we can actually meet kids in the middle. And when you take the time to understand a child and take a breath to, to not give in to the raw emotions that we all experience as parents, which are, are you know, coupled with frustration and anger at some points, um, we can really make miracles happen. And that's where you can give a child the opportunity to develop into a person, a whole person mm. who's also more understanding, who's also more patient, who's also more virtuous. The more virtue we show our children, the more virtue our children will have. So authoritarian parent, again, that's, that's that leadership, I'm the boss type mentality. Permissive parenting is a kind of parenting that, uh, where a parent says, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do, it's your day every single day. I can't say no. My heart breaks if I say no, blah, blah, blah. This is, which is dangerous. That, uh, which is yep. that type of, which is that type? That's, that's, that's called permissive parenting because the parent is permitting the child to do essentially whatever the child wants. This is very to take messy. Of, to take charge mm -hmm. of him or herself. 
there is much freedom a parent gives to a right. child right. to take charge right. of himself. Right, and that's dangerous. Oh. There's a lot of reasons why that's dangerous. Now, the first two, both of them have, have drawbacks, right? Um, if, if you're authoritarian, you're going to create a child who's likely going to have some trauma. They're likely going to have some resentment towards the parent. If you're permissive, mm -hmm. the child might not have any resentment towards the parent because they're allowed to mm -hmm. eat ice cream for breakfast. They can watch as much TV as they want, and mm -hmm. they, they never hear the word no. Mm -hmm. But what happens is this child is learning that in their world, there are no boundaries. And so it's harder for that child to then in turn respect mm -hmm. the boundaries of others. So you're creating someone who's more likely to cross boundaries on other people. They're more likely to be someone who will push the limits of other people and not realize that they should accept no and that no is a necessary word to comply mm -hmm. with at times, um, whether mm -hmm. it's an authority or just someone who's uncomfortable. The third mm -hmm. type of parenting is authoritarian excuse me, authoritative, authoritative. Yeah. Now in authoritative, this is the best form of parenting. This is where you are still maintaining the fact mm. that you are a leader of the household. You are the authority as the adult, mm. as the parent. However, you still honor the child's ability to make choices. So as opposed to making mm. all the choices for the child or letting mm. the child make all the choices for themselves, you're mm. saying, here are your choices, pick. Mm. I am going to present you with two options. Do you want chicken for dinner or do you want lamb for dinner and a child yeah. will say well i want shrimp those aren't the okay. options i said yeah. do you want chicken or lamb and a child learns okay so i have choice but it's based on the box the frame that my parent has given me which yeah. in turn teaches the child to respect the frame that yeah. an adult that the parent is giving them at the yeah. same time still be giving them the ability to make choices for themselves you do want your child to exercise certain levels of independence. That way, as they develop, they are more equipped to take care of themselves. They are more yeah. confident that they can make good choices. Um, mm. And they still feel secure because they know you are going to give them a frame that is reasonable and safe and, mm. and boundaries that they can respect. Mm. So those uh, are three Chris, types of parenting. Mm -hmm. Chris, at what age? Yes. At what age should we say that uh, the authoritative parenting style uh, should start honestly you can start as early as what there is you want to aim to you want to parent with intention right you want to mm. parent with intention you want to have a game plan you want to do what research you can with what time mm. you have you know everyone has different amounts of time some people mm. um they work one job they have plenty of time off from their job. Some people, I work two jobs, I work seven days a week. So I have to make sure that when I have my two hours at the end of the day available, I'm getting whatever work I can get done. Um, you know, but ask yourself, what milestones should my one-year-old be reaching? What milestones should my two-year-old be reaching? What milestones should my three-year-old be reaching? And so on, be intentional. What behaviors are typical for a child this age and what behaviors are not typical? Is, is, mm. is your child six and they're still doing something that you know a three-year-old or a two-year-old should be doing? You want to be mm. very honest with yourself. And it's not to judge anyone. I'm not here to judge mm. anyone or judge anyone's parenting. My job is simply to offer you what has been observed that works. Mm. My job mm. is to offer you what has been observed that mm. down the road is, is, has been seen consistently helpful mm. for children versus consistently not that helpful for children. Mm. And if it's not that helpful for children, it's going to bite mm. you and it's going to bite you in the back as well. So mm. sometimes, sometimes it's, it's uncomfortable for us to admit, ah, you know, I've been doing this with my kid because that's how I was raised and it's a hard mm. habit to break. But, but mm. if I break it, yeah. do I have more peace? And that's the thing to ask mm. yourself because the peace doesn't come with, it's not, it's not a, it's not mm. a, you know, two second fix. It's not a weekend seminar. It's I do the work. And after I do the work for a few days, maybe a few weeks, now my child has progressed. Mm. And now we're past that phase. I no longer have to worry about potty training. I no longer have to worry about sleep training. I no longer have to worry about mm. tantrums. There's certain things you can get past as a parent, mm. so long as you're intentional about it. And you do the work. And be honest with yourself mm. where you are. This is a, it's a hard struggle for mm. all of us parents. To be like, you know what? You know, mm. I yelled at my kid. And I didn't need to yell at them for that. That wasn't mm. really a big deal. Mm -hmm. And if you have a moment where you realize you did wrong by your mm -hmm. kids, mm -hmm. it's okay to be honest with your kid mm -hmm. and say, listen, the other day, mm -hmm. what I mm -hmm. did made you feel a certain way. And next time I'm going to mm -hmm. try and talk to you. So we have an mm -hmm. understanding, 
you know, and that's not how most of us were raised. Most of us didn't have parents mm. who said, I'm going to, I'm going to yeah. apologize for anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, we mm. all wish they did. We all wish mm. they did. We all yeah. had a moment where we saw our mom or dad was clearly in the wrong and they never apologized. And we had, we had mm. to hold on to that feeling. Mm. So why not offer our kids release from that feeling? That's where peace comes from. And we say, you know, even though this happened to me, even though my parents did me like this, I'm not going to do my kids like that because I remember that not feeling good. And even mm. though it's all I have as a model, let me try something mm. else. Let me try something mm. else. Um, so, you know, no, Chris. So parent, authoritative parenting starts at one. As soon mm. as you can think of a way to mm. offer your child a choice, mm. start offering them a choice. Um, and, mm. you know, the baby, if you're offering a baby something as simple as food, you can say, do you want yogurt or do you want, you know, mm. apple slices and let them point. Okay, you want apple mm. slices. Cool. There you go. The sooner mm. you start, the easier it is to continue that trend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now we have a challenge, and this is so common in African settings. Many parents do not understand their children, and the children don't understand who their parents are. However much they stay together, they mm -hmm. eat together, they pay school fees, they try to take care when one gets sick, you know, here and there. But there is no that qualitative understanding and reason that, oh, my parent is shunned, so he's believing in this and that what would be the approximate cause what is missing oh that's interesting um you know that's that's a cultural um you know you're you're expressing a cultural phenomenon that i'm not in so there's only so much i could speak to that right yeah. I'm, I'm west indian my mother's from jamaica and my grandparents are from various caribbean mm -hmm. islands west indian islands mm -hmm. um and you know I, as growing up, I'd see that there was a split between who my parents were and how much I knew about them. And I think part of it is simply that, you know, parents in general just don't share that much about who they are to their kids. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we know how to engage in that conversation with our kids. Like They know we have a job, where our job is. Mm -hmm. They know that we have friends, um, mm -hmm. but they might not know our interests unless we bring them mm -hmm. in. You know, like if mm -hmm. you like a certain type of music, you know, you can have your, your kids sit with you and say, hey, listen to some Fela Kuti for a second. I want you to hear this musician mm. from Nigeria mm. who played back in the 70s. He was a powerful mm. man and he had any, you know, and then break down the history and, mm. and, and share. I think mm. too often as parents, we quiz our kids. We, mm. we quiz our kids or we try to impart a lesson on them. Mm. I think if you can find an opportunity to share, that, mm. that goes a long way. You know, sharing a recipe. Hey, I want to teach you how to make these these mm. arepas. I want to teach you how to make these patties. Come here. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna knead the dough like this, and we're gonna sprinkle this mm. and use this. That's something that's creating a memory. Um, it's mm. creating more connection, and mm. it's giving them something that they can also pass down to their kids. Mm. So yeah. I think finding ways to share is gonna be key. And kids mm. don't always share with parents, so it, mm. it's on us to ask the right questions. They don't want to talk mm. about school. Mm. Kids do not want to hear the question, how was school today? They don't like mm. it. They don't want to ask it. Just as much as we don't want to be asked, how was work today? Work was fine. Mm. I went to work. We all know that no one likes going to work. It was work. Um, you know, mm. with few exceptions. Some of us love our jobs, but most people, it's, mm. it's a mediocre mm. or neutral experience. Mm. But mm. If, you ask if you ask the kids instead about their friends, I find that's mm. a really easy way mm. to open up a conversation. How was, mm. how was X today? How was Y today? How was Z? Ask them about their friends. Ask them mm. if they're young. Ask them what do they wear. Ask mm. them who they played with. If they're older, mm. ask them, you know, how their summer was. You know, it's September, so they might not have seen their friends. Maybe they did, mm. depending on where people live. Mm. You know, how how was such and such a summer? Did they go anywhere? Mm. How is how yeah. is their family? You know, mm -hmm. and, and talk about their interests. Talk about their friends mm -hmm. and talk about the interests. Even if you don't like their interests, right? If they care about mm. some some TikTok challenge or or some Snapchat filter that you're not familiar with, mm. you can you can still ask. You know, it yeah. shows them that you care about what they care about. And that's that mm. opens the door more for kids than than us quizzing them on what they learned in school today or, mm -hmm. you know, what what five times five is or mm -hmm. you know, are they ready for their exams? You know, just mm. we have to move the conversation from purely scholastic and, mm. and quizzing to sharing mm. and, and 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 really inquiring about them. That that'd be my yes. recommendation. Mm. Yeah, th thank you so much for that uh, knowledge sharing. I, I would request you to have a message for university students. They are also still uh, the guidance of their parents and leaders in these knowledge institutions like lecturers, doctors, professors. I need a message because 
uh, mostly in Africa, you go out of your parents' hands when you join a university. She stops taking care of you, monitoring you, you sleep, you, you are taking care of yourself. But we need not to lose your life as a student, you've gone. I need a message, what package do you have for them? They are going to listen, they are going to watch the BPS Africa podcast immediately after their lectures. I would say first and foremost, aim to understand how the world works. Understand how money works, understand how time works. Understand mm -hmm. your talents and how you work and figure out what problem you most want to solve. A lot of people will ask you to pick a profession. Um, and it's all well and good to say, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be an engineer because it's been told to you that's an honorable profession and it makes money. Um, I would say, ask yourself, mm -hmm. in addition, what problem do I want to solve in this mm -hmm. world that I live in, in my world, in my community? What problem do I mm -hmm want mm -hmm. to solve? What talents do I have that lead me to solve that? And then ask yourself what profession mm -hmm. meets in the middle? Um, mm -hmm. Because it, it might be something that you don't expect is actually the true mm -hmm. calling for you and your spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and, and aim to make sure that your success, um, mm -hmm. as you master time, as you master money, as you master mm -hmm. yourself, as you mm -hmm. master your emotions, aim mm -hmm. to make sure you do take care of your community in some small way. Aim to make sure mm -hmm. that your parents are taken care of in some big way. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure that your family, your and your neighborhood and your community are doing mm -hmm. well, and don't look mm -hmm. past those who suffer. Mm -hmm. Help as you can. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you're burning out, mm -hmm. take time to recover and learn how to take care of yourself so that you don't burn out. It's okay to get stressed mm -hmm. out. It's okay to feel burnout. Almost everyone mm -hmm. does. If anyone tells you mm -hmm. otherwise, they're not being mm -hmm. uh, very mm -hmm. truthful. Um, mm -hmm. But understand to read your own signals. When you need mm -hmm. help, ask for help. When you need a break, take a break. Be as mm. responsible as you can, because mm. this is the period in your life in universities where mm. big mistakes can have big mm. consequences. So it's mm. better to just be honest with yourself if you're if you're making any mistakes or if you're mm. not living as well as you could to adjust mm. that quickly and remember how does the mm. world work? How does money work? How does time work? Mm. And pay mm. attention to how you work and your talents so that way you can be on the best path forward. Mm. Mm. Oh, then that is a wonderful uh, package, Lord sharing for them. I know it will land on a fertile soil. Uh, I thank Community for a Cause for sponsoring this show, this program. Uh, now everyone is watching, uh, others will join us. So I ask more supporters, sponsors to join BP's Africa podcast and sponsor shows, talk shows. I need supporters from America, from Canada, <laughs> Germany, <laughs> Africa, everywhere. Yes, PPS Africa is everywhere. I need to see many of them coming on this podcast and sharing their Absolutely. constructive ideas to this nation. Any topic is welcome so long as it is healing a societal ill or problem because we are a community for a cause. And this is BPS Africa podcast. So what modern innovative parenting style have you uh, in this modern changing world? Any modernity in the style of parenting you think that really can do a great job? So wait, say, ask me that again. What style of parenting you, do I think? You know, yeah. today the world is moving at a telefix speed. People are innovating. Yes. There is much knowledge creation, knowledge designing and redesigning, knowledge rethink, knowledge exploration, all that. So in the parenting styles, have you any uh, innovation in parenting that you can share to ex uh, most especially these parents who are busy living far from their kids? Sure, I would say it starts with, you know, starts from birth. You know, if you want a revolutionary way to parent, it's giving yeah. kids more credit. It's, and it's also assisting kids in their development. So my work as a behavior therapist, behavior analyst has taught me different ways to physically guide children through their hands, giving certain phrases for kids to hear and responding to certain behavior in a way that reinforces or, or rewards what they're doing so that they're able to meet their milestones. Um, once I had my daughter, I realized that what I do with children with special needs applies to anyone, it applies to any kid. And, mm -hmm. and I think parents overall can really see in the next generation or two 
a, a huge spike in development much faster if we give kids more credit. Kids can learn to, to read at three years old. You can start them on that path at two. Kids can learn to add at two years old. You can start them on that path as well. But we, we wait. We're, we're told that we need to wait till they're in the first grade for this and second grade for this and third. If you expose a child and they show an interest, you can develop their skill set in that, their knowledge in that to a level that previous generations couldn't have imagined. Especially now that we have technology, you can find ways to really get them interested in it. So I think the important thing for parents to consider is the brain health and the brain development of their children mm. and use whatever means necessary, whatever means available mm. to develop their kids' brains intentionally, mm. to, to, to assist their brains, mm. their cognition, their intelligence to increase mm. intentionally. Something as simple as puzzles. Mm. Puzzles, mm. puzzles build IQ because mm. when a child's working with a puzzle, A, they're, they're attending, so their focus and attention span is going to increase by giving them access to puzzles at a young age. They're developing their fine motor skills or dexterity to put the puzzle pieces in the right place. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. problem solving. They're, mm -hmm. they're using what's called eye-hand coordination. Their eyes are telling their hand where to go. All mm -hmm. these in concert are building the IQ mm -hmm. of the child. So if you start a child mm -hmm. at two with puzzles and you really keep giving them access to puzzles and in three, you give more complex puzzles and more complex puzzles and more complex puzzles, you're making a more mm -hmm. complex brain. And from birth to three years old is where 80% of the brain develops, 80%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you really stimulate the brain in educational mm -hmm. manner, mm -hmm. you really hands-on address mm -hmm. the brain and its growth in educational manner from birth to three years old, and you minimize screen time, mm -hmm. you want to minimize screen time from birth to three, keep it under an hour. You want zero mm -hmm. screen time from birth to two, unless it's mm -hmm. FaceTiming, um, mm -hmm. because that's time lost. That time that they're mm -hmm. staring at a screen, they're not having a conversation with you. They're not looking at a book. Mm. They're not playing with puzzles. They're mm. not engaging with other kids. Mm. So you're missing opportunities and they can only learn so much from watching the wheels mm. and the bus go round and round over and over and over again. Um, but if we engage that birth to three intentionally, I think we can mm. see kids become what we used to call geniuses and make mm. that the normal. We can see kids mm. who are very intelligent, very capable mm. Um, mm. because we just decided let's, let's try and raise mm. them with more credit. Let's give mm -hmm. them access to things we normally wouldn't assume a two mm -hmm. or three year old can do. So mm -hmm. that's the that's the revolution of parenting I want to see. Kids getting mm -hmm. more credit, parents yeah. being more intentional, and brains mm -hmm. growing to the optimal potential between birth and three. Yeah, thank you so much. In addition to that, I have a huge responsibility of orienting this nation uh, into the know-how transfer games. I innovated the know-how transfer games for knowledge building. We lack this in Africa. There is that huge knowledge gap. We lack mental building games. So this mental building game of the know-how transfer game rebuilds the mental capacities. They take learners into critical thinking, into knowledge exploration, into knowledge creation, into charismatic skills, into knowledge mobilization, knowledge acquisition. All that is get ready for. And do you know what? 95% almost of the entire world do not play any constructive game. They are mm. just watchers. If you do play, the widest population, they're just watchers. So they know how to transfer games are uh, bringing back that huge percentage into active players because we deal with mental development, which is wanting. So one day, one time, we shall have that topic of the know-how transfer games. And we see as an analyst how they contribute to building our mental capacities. And uh, now nice. uh, I, I continue to thank you for sparing this variable time to speak to the nation, to speak to all people on this planet, because you are interested in healing this planet. Uh, you have time. Yeah for prisoners, for veterans, street children. So what do you have for street children who are no longer living with their guardians? How do they receive parenting? The children who are living in the streets, the streets. Are going to need, they are going to need the compassion of those who are living inside the homes. Children on the streets are, are not responsible for their parenting. They they're fighting a day they struggle just to survive. Um, they're, they're, so unless someone else is being a steward 
of compassion and love mm -hmm. and bringing them books mm -hmm. and bringing them food and shelter, yeah. mm -hmm. then they will most likely graduate to a life of crime by the time they hit mm -hmm. 17, 18, 20. Mm -hmm. um, and not because they're bad, but because mm -hmm. survival demands it. If you don't mm -hmm. have resources, mm -hmm. you need to eat. If, if you don't have a home, mm -hmm you're going to find food somewhere and it's going to start with theft and graduate to other things. So I, I have no, I have no message mm. for the children of the street except for, I love you. And I'm sorry that life is not as beautiful as you deserve. Uh, my message is to those who see them and wish better for them. Mm. Be the better mm. for them. Don't mm. simply look up and say a prayer and hope that goodness will be zapped their way. Be the better for them. God calls on those who are so moved and stirred mm. to serve those who are mm. sick and poor. Every great prophet mm. has told us this. So mm. do the work as you are able. If you're not able, this message is not mm. for you. But if you are able, do the work. Mm. Yeah. Do the work. Thank you so much, Chris. Like I see, we're having three minutes. Not yes. so. <laughs> yeah, we're having three minutes. But in these remaining three minutes, could you just update us about the progress of the uh, lead poisoning project that you had. Okay, so uh, if people are not aware, you and I are working on helping children with lead poisoning. Um, and the goal is to help provide them with a plant-based medicine that Columbia Research has found literally helps the brain to regrow despite prior damage from lead poisoning. So in the months ahead, you and I will be able to meet. I'm looking forward to visiting Uganda um, and, and seeing yeah. you in person, friend. <laughs> and we will, it, we're going to start the, the medical process. I have another team as well in Uganda that's doing the same. And it's going to take about two weeks. Mm. That's what the research has shown, about two weeks of being given mm. this plant three times a day has shown to reverse mm. the brain damage uh, that is been received by those in the study. Now, what's fascinating to me about this is um, this is very new information and, and, and I'm excited to see the progress because then we can share it with the world and potentially lead others towards a path of embracing simple plant-based medicine. This is a plant that's mm -hmm. very hardy. It's easy to grow mm -hmm. um, and it's, mm -hmm. it's non-toxic. It's just, it's a very, very fortunate gift that we have available mm -hmm. to us to help those who are suffering. And Ronald, I, I can't wait. I can't mm. wait. I'm God is God is telling me to be patient and I'm doing my best to listen, but I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, now uh, <laughs> your concluding remarks, Chris. Your concluding remarks. Uh blessings to us all. Thank you for having me here. Um, you know, to the parents out there, do your best. Do your best. Don't be perfect, but try. And if you make a mistake, yeah. own up to it. And if something works, do it again. Yeah. You know, try to connect with your kids yeah. and you know, ask them about their friends. Um, kids out there, understand how the world works, mm -hmm. understand how time works, mm -hmm. understand how money works, mm -hmm. understand how you work, mm -hmm. and aim to master yourself, mm -hmm. especially your emotions. And and to all others, you know, I wish you well, um, and may we all evolve together. Yeah, thank you so much. This is Be Peace Africa podcast. We've had Chris Lake, one of the knowledge engineers the planet has had. He has spoken and his message has landed on a fertile of soil. Thank you so much. God bless you. We we'll meet in our next podcasts. Reading to the New York City citizens. Okay. All right. Take care, yeah. Ronald. Much love to all in Uganda. Thank you so much.